Ryan, what's on your radar? Well, Joe Rogan released a long video yesterday responding to criticism that his show has been spreading dangerous misinformation, and it was reported largely as him apologizing to Spotify for causing all of this drama. But there was more to it than that, and if the left looks, there's actually a huge opening to see here. So let's imagine for a second that in the left's wildest dreams, they managed to actually convince Spotify to dump Rogan, which they're still trying to do. What happens the next day? Does Rogan's podcast disappear? Of course not. It just winds up pushed onto whichever right-wing platform wins the bidding war to host it, and his viewers go with him. So rather than trying to de-platform Rogan, the left has a golden opportunity to take him up on the offer he just made. I think uh, if there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. Uh, I would most certainly be open to doing that. And uh, I would like to talk to some people that have uh, differing opinions on those podcasts in the future. We'll see. Um, you know, I do all the scheduling myself, and uh, I don't always get it right. Edward Snowden, who's been a guest on Rogan's show, said recently that the people with the strongest opinions about Joe Rogan seem to be those who don't listen to Joe Rogan's show. Now, if you do listen, what you hear is somebody who mostly just lets his guests talk while trying to guide the conversation into interesting places. Now, like most Americans, he has a scrambled mismatch of politics, some right, some left. Now, obviously, if you get somebody on the show who wants to take advantage of his agreeability, the interview can go haywire, which for a lot of listeners is actually part of the entertainment. But what that also means is that Rogan presents a huge opportunity for left-wing voices to come on and make their best case to the biggest audience in the country. And they'll, and they'll be surprised at what a sympathetic hearing they're likely to get, not just from Rogan, but from his audience. Sure, lots of his listeners are convinced of their right-wing politics and, have become, and, have, and they've become kind of dug-in partisans and they won't want to hear it. But those are a minority. Most people just want a podcast that's fun and interesting to listen to. So I recently saw some left-wing people making the argument that Rogan is now the contemporary equivalent of Rush Limbaugh. It's hard to describe just how wrong that is. Rush was an explicitly political operative, somebody deeply invested in changing American political culture, and also somebody who didn't really have many guests on. Rogan is an MMA guy and a comedian who kind of stumbled backwards into his popularity. This description is not misinformation. I don't know what else I can do uh, differently other than maybe try harder to get people with uh, differing opinions on right afterwards. I do think that that's important and, uh, and do my best to make sure that I've researched these topics, the, the controversial ones in particular, and have all the pertinent facts at hand before I discuss them. Again, I'm not trying to promote misinformation. I'm not trying to be controversial. I've, I've never tried to do anything with this podcast other than just talk to people and have interesting conversations. I didn't plan it. I can't believe it's as successful as it is. It was never uh, really an idea that I had. I, I, the, the podcast started off as just f***ing around with my friends and having fun and talking. And then when it became popular, other people wanted to come on and I was like, oh, it'd be cool to talk to that person. Oh, he's interesting. Oh, she's got a cool book out. And then boom, it's become what it is today, which is like some out of control juggernaut that I barely have control of. So my pledge to you is that I will do my best to try to balance out these more controversial viewpoints with other people's perspectives so we can maybe find a better point of view. I don't want to just show the, the contrary opinion to what the narrative is. I want to show all kinds of opinions so that we can all figure out what's going on. And, and not just about COVID, about everything, about health, about fitness, wellness, the, the state of the world itself. Um, it's a strange responsibility to have this many viewers and listeners. It's very strange. And it's nothing that I prepare for. And it's nothing that I ever anticipated. I am going to do my best in the future to uh, balance things out. I'm going to do my best. Now, I've been critical of the efforts to get Rogan thrown off the air, but I've also said that given Rogan's massive audience, he does now have a responsibility to get things right. And I'm glad he's recognizing that. 
It's also true that the outrage directed his way does seem to have made an impact. If I pissed you off, I'm sorry. And uh, if you enjoy the podcast, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Spotify. Thank you all the supporters. And, and even thank you to the haters because it's good to have some haters. It makes you reassess what you're doing and put things into perspective. And, and uh, I, think, I think that's good too. That's how public discourse ought to work. The haters should be heard out. And if their complaints are valid, the hated should take that into account. Rogan is saying that he's willing to do that. But if the left responds by continuing to pressure people not to go on his show, it'll be impossible for him to make good on that promise. It's a good offer. The left should try to take it. And one reason I wanted to play the longer clips of, from that video is that it's very clear, if you look at the discourse going on on Twitter, for instance, that basically nobody watched the actual video. You have people saying, like, oh, he didn't, he didn't apologize. All he said is, oh, I'm sorry if you feel bad. There was some real reflection in that video that, that he posted. He's like, look, I, I've made mistakes. What, one thing I've done wrong, I could do better. Have other voices on after I have, like, a crank, like a McCullough. He doesn't call him a crank my view, crank. After I have a McCall on, I have somebody else on. That's the opening. So tell him, hey, pitch him. Here, here's somebody who's great. They're engaging. Uh, they'll do a, an incredible four-hour show, and they'll move your audience in our direction. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I, I, hope, uh, I, I hope the left listens to you. I mean, you're absolutely right. It, this is a uh, this is just indicative of the, this problem in, in some aspects of the progressive left or progressive liberals or whatever you want to call them, where it's like no, no one is good enough. You have to be good enough to be worthy of being in dialogue with us, to be, to be, for us to want to be involved with you at all, and no one is good enough, especially not someone who has you know, occasionally heterodox views on cultural issues or social issues. Um, the economic stuff, they don't care that much. I mean, the, 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 the Twitter punditocracy on the, on the liberal side, the progressive side, is very interested in social issues, cultural issues, um, not so much the stuff that you care about and so many of our viewers care about. Uh, and it shows, and it's just, it's a, yeah, it's a massive lost opportunity that will drive, like, driving R Rogan into the, and that audience further, it's right. further right. It's driving them in the direction you don't want to go. I think so many people just don't understand how influence is supposed to work. How you, right. how you, you want to build a bigger coalition. You want to claim people for your side. It would be better to be able to say, Rogan is one of us. His people right. are potential us and people. And you're one of us. Right, right. yes. <laughs> Not the, not the opposite signal that you're sending. You know, if, what, well, the signal that they're sending right now is that it is Joe Rogan verse, move on, and all, and all of these other organizations on the left, that, that they are enemies. And so then if you're a fan of Joe Rogan, which apparently there are tens of millions, because if you're getting 11 million per show, not everybody's listening to every show. You, know, you get people who are like, oh, I'm skipping all the comedians or whatever. Right. So that's, that, that means there's probably tens of millions of people who Which would... is huge. We, huge. Cannot, we cannot overstate how, we can't understate how big that audience is. That's bigger than, that's bigger than watching the successful cable news right. shows. Rachel Maddow is a million or two. Yeah. Right, every, every night. Uh, and Tucker Carlson, the biggest show on cable is three or four million or something like that. And he's just blowing all those out of the water. So you have this opportunity. You have a guy saying, I'd love to give you three or four hours to talk to an impressionable audience of potentially tens of millions. Because the Malone episode got like 40, 50 yeah. million listeners. And people have done that. Sanjay Gupta did yeah. that. They had a very interesting exchange. It was good. It was a great yeah. episode. So do, like, so do that. Like, what, what it, it betrays. So I said this so on my radar yesterday, this. but it betrays a lack of faith that your yeah. ideas can win and can be persuasive. That's why yeah. you have to be, if you think your views are right, you should be pro-free speech. You should think they will win out if you're allowed to express them. If you're, if you're very convinced you have the good argument and that, that your views are solid and well supported by science and data, then you should not be afraid of having that conversation. And like I said, they're going to find that he agrees with them on, on most things. And not just because he's agreeable. That but will also, surprise them most of all. That, that will. But, and I, I thought about adding some of these clips. I didn't want it to get too long. But people should Google up. Maybe I can do a future radar on this. People, go Google his conversation with Dan Crenshaw about Medicare for All. 
or uh, go go uh, go Google his conversation with Dave Rubin about housing inspectors, and which mm -hmm. which then uh, t moves into an entire conversation about government and regulatory power. He's making extremely persuasive left wing arguments the entire time, and making these right wingers look like fools. And I and I think anybody who hasn't watched his show would be just completely surprised by that. Like that's. Why is he doing that? That's weird. Oh, maybe I didn't quite understand what was going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, I'm looking forward to what's on your radar up next. Maybe more Joe Rogan. <laughs> maybe. <laughs>